Hi, I'm Mike Wayne. In a previous video, we were fortunate to have Wayne Nelson describe his turquoise collection. And Wayne Nelson is a very private man. He's had this collection for many, many years, but not very many people know about Wayne Nelson. And so we were fortunate that he was willing to share some information with us. But in that video, we really didn't get a very, a very close look at some of the turquoise. So I thought in this video, we take a closer look at the turquoise in the Wayne Nelson collection. Now, finding high-grade turquoise is becoming more and more difficult. There is just very, very little on the market People balk at the price. They think somehow paying 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars a carat is just far too expensive. But I don't know where else you're going to find a product that sells at a third of the price that it sold for over 100 years ago. And that's really the situation we have with high grade turquoise. I think that happens because we have a two tier market where inexpensive, stabilized turquoise dominates the marketplace. And there just isn't enough awareness or demand in the marketplace for the natural high grade. But I think that's changing as people get more educated through efforts like Turquoise in America, part one and part two, and really understand what a very, very rare gemstone turquoise is, especially at these high grades. So the only turquoise we're really finding in that high grade is coming from the old collections, the hordes that were occasionally coming to market now. Because the turquoise miners, it's so costly. And you're talking about rare turquoise in natural anyway, and to get the high grade at the very high gem grade at one tenth of one percent of all the turquoise, it's just far too costly for the price they're getting in the marketplace. So my advice, if you can find high grade, gem grade turquoise, buy it. So with that, we're gonna take a look at some beautiful turquoise from the Wayne Nelson collection from Candelaria, Hidden Valley, and Lone Mountain. Wayne Nelson first got involved in turquoise when he was cutting turquoise for Francis Farr at the Lone Mountain Mine in 1974-1975. Now this is the fewest amount of uh, turquoise that Wayne had in his collection because as a cutter there, he was not in a position to have access to lots of stones. But we can see here he did keep some very nice specimens, some nice cabs in his collection. So we start here at the top and we're seeing some very, very high grade, wonderful traditional look for Lone Mountain turquoise. Coming down here, we have a little bit different here. We have two little lighter looks that are coming, but overall just an extremely very high grade to gem grade Lone Mountain turquoise. After cutting at Lone Mountain in 1974-75, Wayne continued uh, cutting turquoise, buying different turquoise, and selling it. And he became known in the Tonopah area as a, a well-known turquoise cutter and turquoise dealer. And he was approached in 1976 by a prospector who had 600 pounds of turquoise that he called Hidden Valley. And Hidden Valley has always been somewhat of an enigma. I think that's probably because it was almost certainly high graded from private mining land. But we tell that story in uh, an article on our blog about Hidden Valley, and you can read about that there. As uh, Wayne said in our video where, where he was telling us about the collection, there was about 600 pounds of it, and he pretty much sold all of it. And it came in different uh, grades. 
what we're looking at here is a range of turquoise that I'm sure few people have seen because while it was small production at 600 pounds and certainly different grades, uh, we would think we would see more Hidden Valley turquoise in jewelry than we do. And I think a lot of times we may see it and just don't even know that it is Hidden Valley. But we're gonna see a range of different looks here. We see here some looks that these, this, this cab and uh, this cab, this cab, all look like they probably were cut maybe from the same stone. Whereas this one, very, very different. In fact, I'm looking at that and I, I think that has a, a very different look, almost like a blue diamond kind of look in, the, in its highest grade. Again, a different kind of look down here, lighter blue over here. This cab, of course, very closely associated with this one. And then here we have this, which is, my goodness, that certainly looks like a very high grade Candelaria. So these all are in very high grade Hidden Valley turquoise showing several different distinctive looks. In our interview with Wayne, he showed a very large piece of rock and described how it sat in his daughter's display case for 40 years before he finally decided to cut it because he just didn't have a saw big enough to cut through this big 14 pound piece of rock. He finally ended up just using a diamond blade on his skill saw with a hose, cutting through one half of one side, one half of the other, broke it apart. And in half of the rock, he came up with what I think is the highest grade of all Hidden Valley. We're seeing this, and, uh, and I hope you can see some of this blue. It's always difficult in photos to capture it. But here we see this very, very large 400 plus carat stone with this very distinctive, both a little green hue and then of course this sort of quartzy rock here in the background. Here we have a very distinctive blue for Hidden Valley, as we see in this stone with again this, this quartz matrix. And those are really two discerning features of what I call the gem grade Hidden Valley, and that would be this green in the background and this, this quartz, this brown quartz here, with this quite distinctive blue. Here again, we're seeing the green, see the green hue in there, and these splotches, these beautiful distinctive blue of Hidden Valley. Then a little different look here, look at this beautiful saturation here of the blue in this cab in this one, and then of course down here in these two. So this is what I would really consider to be the gem grade Hidden Valley. You know, we really can't uh, leave the Wayne Nelson collection without taking a look at what is truly probably the most important piece in the entire collection. And that is really this extraordinarily large 560 plus carat nugget of the highest grade of Candelaria. I had certainly heard about this nugget. I'd never seen it. And then Wayne was here and, and he shared it with me. And I'm sharing it with, with you folks so you can see this quite extraordinary example, something that you're not going to see again. So let me just take a look at this. Let's just look at this a little bit, enjoy some of this extraordinary web in there exhibiting the highest grade Candelaria. And you can see that this certainly has every appearance of going all the way through this extraordinary nugget. Now, of course, that's the, that's the thing about turquoise. You can... You have the nugget, you feel it, has a certain weight to it. You can feel the solidness and that the turquoise should extend all the way through that. But there's always that moment when you decide to cut it and you cut into it and you may be wonderfully surprised and that this beautiful blue goes all the way through it. 
Or maybe the turquoise gods will have a surprise for you and it will not go all the way through. But in this instance, it doesn't matter because this nugget hasn't been cut since it came out of the ground. And I don't think it's going to for a long, long time. So once again, wanted everybody to have a chance to see this really major, major turquoise nugget. In 1985, Wayne uh, received the concession for mining the dumps at the Candelaria Silver Mine that was run by the Nerco Mining Company. And he only had that for about a year before they shut that down. So he was able to work the dumps. They would take the material, put it into a, a pile in a certain area, and he could have access to that and then pay for the turquoise by the pound as he took it out. And we're going to see here some different looks for Candelaria turquoise, some of which uh, many of you may not have seen before. We see here at the top, and we have what I call more of a, of a water web, a, a lighter webbed look from Candelaria. Going down here into the center section, we see what would generally be considered more of the traditional high-grade, gem-grade Candelaria, especially this one over here where we have kind of a, a, a reddish uh, background matrix with this very distinctive blue formation in there. These two caps are sort of distinctive because it really has in there what I believe is some some, some, I guess you'd call it maybe native silver. It's really more closely tied to the ore body that they had there at the silver mine. And we see this also here in this cab. Finally, at the very bottom, we're seeing what I consider to be really the rarest of, of all turquoise that, that I know about. And that is this dark web candelaria. Exceptionally rare, in fact, I don't know of hardly any other cabs except the ones you're seeing right here. So we're really seeing a, a lot close-up look at some exceptional turquoise of different grades, different mines from the Wayne Nelson collection.